just finished the most amazing, open, honest and frank conversation with some young people at Carney's community. We talked about the anti-black racism, but we also talked about some of the structural inequalities and their real life experiences. And I am just so proud that I have the opportunity to be part of that conversation with them this afternoon. Obviously, since I've been elected here, I've been eight, I've, one of my kind of key priorities has always been about young people, but more importantly, about young people that look like myself, because I recognise and know the challenges that we have to kind of overcome, because I've, I've had to overcome them. But I absolutely want to hear your stories about things. Me, I've had racism in school, I've had racism in the workplace until, I didn't even realise it was racist until three years later. And I'm like, hold on, that was actually quite racist. And then there's certain things that people don't even think that they're being racist at the time. In construction, being the only black person there, like, it was, it was very awkward. I even, it even come to a point where I used to take days off work just for my mental health, yeah. due to the fact that I didn't feel good working in that environment no more. And it come to a point where a colleague of mine told me that my supervisor was calling me do you understand where I'm coming from? So even me to hear that, I've never been in an environment I've never heard that in my life. I, I'm actually, I'm getting frustrated by it because it is the most, like, it's just a real dumb argument. Like, real, it, well, just human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, regardless of what shade you are, that's George's daughter. She's no less his daughter because she, she produces more metal in him. I, of course, I don't know what it's like to be a young black girl, but growing up as a young mixed race girl, um, I never saw, like, anyone beautiful who looked like me. I never saw like any princesses who looked like me, any models on the TV who looked like me, uh, or anyone who even just had my hair. And it always made me feel so insecure about how I looked. And like, up until I was about like eight, I wanted to be white my whole life. I just wanted to be white. I wanted to be white with blue eyes and blonde hair. I didn't want to have curly hair, I didn't want to have brown skin or brown eyes. I just wanted to be white my whole life. And it's just, it's not fair for children to want to be a whole different race because they're made to feel that it's ugly. And it needs to change now. We can't wait for another black man or another black woman to be killed in the hands by people who were protecting us. It needs to happen now. There's kids who are young, who are 17, who feel like they have to roll, have a knife. There's another group of kids who are 17 who to have a knife is absolutely ludicrous. Mm. So that's two different extremes, mm. yeah? So what's going on? They're, they're the same age. What are these lot learning that these lot aren't learning? What are these lot learning that they're not learning? Mm. What's going on? And there's no one in the middle that's, that's connecting the conversations or connecting the people. That's the biggest problem we've got in society is that there's no, there doesn't seem to be a real true route for people who have really struggled in life to be able to progress and become decision makers. And I think some of the people that we've got around, around the table today here are people that the things that they've been through, they have been through hell, but they've managed to get through it and to still become successful, yet they're still been trying to be held back by society. We have people choosing to abstain from voting simply because their perception of the state is so negative. And we see that through seeing videos like what, the track that what happened to George Floyd, um, just continues that cycle. And we will never have full engagement from the black community until we improve the relationship between the state and the black community. Many people don't have trust in politicians because they don't think the politicians represent them or can be their voice. And that's why it's so important for me to make sure that I am there with my community, representing them and being their voice, but also listening to them. And that's why those conversations are so important. And I'm just looking forward to continuing to build what we started this afternoon, because those shared and lived experiences are what really need to help us shape the policies that we want to go on and bring about positive change for our communities.